Okay, um, this is your kit. This is basically the way you're going to find it um, when you're receiving the mail. Um, I've already moved the plastic wrap and everything to make it a little bit easier to access, but uh, this is basically it. Um, the kit consists of about four main parts. Um, most importantly, uh, let's talk about this one. It's your electron electronic speed controller. Uh, There's a microprocessor controlled and intelligent speed controller. This is what you need. This is the brains for the brushless hub motor. Um, the old style um, brush motor, they don't need this kind of, they, they just pretty much have direct lift to the battery. Uh, but these are a little bit more advanced. Um, they're about between 20 and 30 some more efficient than our old, old style brush motor. Um, this is the brains of the operation right here. Next, uh, we have, um, these are your brakes. Now, these are very important. Um, I get customers constantly asking me what's the deal with these. And here's the deal. Um, these are, what these are going to do is these are going to cut off. You need to replace your existing, your existing uh, brakes with these. So when, you, when you pull on the brakes, this cuts off the motor so that you don't rip out the dropouts at the bottom of your torque. So there's a whole lot of torque going on inside the, the hub motor, um, and it's all concentrated on one little you know, three-quarter of an inch space, which is your, the dropouts on your front porch. So when you hit the brakes, um, this is going to cut off the juice to the motor and let you stop. Let, turn up your forks. So, here we have, um, this is a basic thumb for all. This one's really simple. Um, you're not going to get one of these. I, I ordered a little bit more advanced ones. I ordered some that have a, uh, the new ones are going to have, uh, they've got an on-off switch and LED battery gauge. Um, let you know how far you're going to go before you run out of battery. Now the main part here, we have our hub motor. Now this is the 26 inch, uh, 36 volt, 500 watt. Amp bikes, um, electric hub motor. It's brushless. Um, it's going to last you a lifetime. Um, I had these custom made for me. Uh, last year we were buying off the shelf um, hub kits from a company called Gold Motors. And it, it, the actual motors themselves weren't too bad, but um, I had a lot of problems with a lot of the other stuff. Uh, so I decided just to skip them and um, have some custom ones made and um, you know, up the quality here a little bit. And uh, try to compete with the big guys. So uh, here we have it. Let's um, let's see what this can take us to put this thing together. Okay, this is gonna be our first step. Um, the very first thing we want to do is we'll let the. I've got the uh, this is that swimming cruiser I bought. I've got it upside down, and uh, we're gonna let the air out of the front tire. So let me grab something to uh, do that with. I'm gonna let the air out of the tire. Next thing I want to do is I want to, um, you may not have to do this, you let the air out, um, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, you may not be able to see it, but you're going to need to unhook your brakes. If you have cantilever brakes in order to let the wheel out, you're going to pull the front front, uh, front tire and rim off. Okay, and that's that. Okay, we have our front rim off. The next thing we want to do is we're going to remove this tire and tube from um, from our bicycle. We're going to remove it so we can put it on the new uh, hub kit. Um, I'm a cabinet maker, so I never have uh, the exact tools that a bike guy is going to use, but um, here's the deal. Um, you get your tire off. You know, most people know how to do this, but a lot of people don't, so I'm just going to go ahead and show them how to do it. First thing you want to do is you want to pry without cutting. Remember, there's a tube inside here, so you don't want to use anything sharp, anything that's going to cut the tube inside. You just want to pop the outside edge of the tire up over the top of the rim. Let's see if you can see, can see that. So it's up over the rim. I'm just using a flat piece of metal like on my shop. I'm just going to front work it over the rim and once I get it out you know 10 15 percent of the way I can do the rest by hand okay so you've got that you got the rim off or the tire off on one side of the rim and now um, we can pull the tube you know pull the nipple out of the tube pull it out of the rim there's the uh, the nipple of the tube just pull it out of the rim Pull it off to the side, same side that you pulled the tire off of, and just pull it out and set it aside. Um, normally, you know, normally it, it's not with all rims. Some rims are a little bit larger than others, and some tires are a little bit smaller than others. But normally, you can just pull the rim 
right, right away from the tire once you have the one side off. So we're going to set these aside. And um, unfortunately, we're going to end up wasting this because we're going to put our new uh, hub kit on here. You grab that. Now, okay, your hub kit, your hub kit, or your hub. I'm going to loosen this all the way up and see how much room we got here. Um, depending on depending on your bike, you know, the, the distance in between the forks here may differ slightly. So what I'm going to do is, oh, before we get, get to that, okay, if you take a look at the, the edge of the, take a look at the very edge of the, um, where the cord comes out, you want this facing upward when you're on top of the bike. And this goes off the left-hand side of the bike. So we need to organize this. This is the left-hand side of the bike right here. We need to orientate this so it's going to be facing upward. So that's so it'll, and then also it's going to drop right into these notches here. If you look at this, well, you'll see when you get yours, um, the bolts on the hub motor are flattened off so they fit right into the notch onto the uh, the drop house on your forks. So let's have a look here. I didn't measure any of this. So we're just going to kind of wing it and see if we can use the washers or not. Let me turn this upward so that the, uh, the flat is facing downward. Let's just double check our widths here. Okay, it appears that this one, I've got a giant in my shop there, a giant bicycle that uh, uh, the forks are wide enough. So this one I'm not going to be able to use. There's these large washers that are built in onto the, uh, the hub motor here. And this one, apparently, it's not going to take them. Um, but it does have a notch in there that's big enough to accept so that the forks uh, won't let it free spin leave or it spin freely. So now that we know what we need to do, everything's good. We don't need to adjust um, our forks at all. It's a really tight fit. So everything's going to be good. I'm going to pull this back off. We're going to do the same thing in here that we did with the uh, tire in reverse. I'll move the cruiser out of the way here a little bit. Okay, we have our tire. Now, this is going to vary with, with all situations. You know, some tires are a little bit smaller, some tires are a little bit larger. What I like to do is I like to push the tire onto one side, just like we pulled it off of one side. And just kind of work it over so that one side of the tire is over the rim. Okay, we are in. All right, then we have one side of the tire in. Then we can find the hole in the rim where the nipple for the tube goes. It's kind of awkward. You should be doing this on a table instead of uh, in your lap. 